Hello, people. How you doing today? This is the Lee Cole Three Podcast with my partner James Proctor. James, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing good, Lee. How are you? Not bad. Uh, you know, today we're going to talk about John Panisi once again because um, uh, he did something that really gets underneath my skin, and I don't know if it gets underneath your skin. Uh, what is it up with these guys that are, are they're they're basically informants? They're rats. Yeah. Yep. And they attack the people that they ratted on continuously, the people sitting in jail. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's something I, I just don't understand. And it bothers me, too. And, you know, we just talked about it with uh, Dominic Ciccali and it's Jimmy. Just... You had, and you got Jimmy Clander that does it with uh, mm -hmm. with um, Tommy Reynolds. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a matter of fact, you have. Um, uh, what's his name? I'm not gonna. I can't think of his name right now. The guy from uh, Springfield. He talks. Oh, Arolada. Arolada. With um, mm -hmm. he talks about the the guy that was killed, and, and he fights mm -hmm. with the family. He talks bad about the family. Yeah. Uh, you every damn one of them. John A. Light goes after Gotti, uh, mm -hmm. Gotti Jr. Um, then you have uh, Sammy Gravano goes after Gotti Senior. It's like yeah. these guys that rat. They want you to think that they had every reason to rat. So what they do is they attack the person that they ratted on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why I don't understand. I would be ashamed and embarrassed to do that. You know, I just, I don't understand how people can take them seriously when they're, at, you know, they continue to, you know, put fuel in the fire against people they put away. I just, it's just, it's, it's just mind boggling. And then, you know, when we see what, uh, Panisi did in his uh, community page on his YouTube channel. It, you know, I thought that was uh, poor and, and taste. I'm going to put this up and down. We're going to talk about him. So he puts up Steve, Stephen Korea, and then he puts up some crap about, oh, Stephen Korea was stealing from the working man and all that stuff. Once again, Stephen Korea is someone you testified and you put in prison. And I'm going to make this challenge to John Panisi. John Panisi. I will show you my last 20 years on my social security and my jobs if you show me yours. I bet you don't even have two years of jobs. So here you are. You're talking about the working man. First of all, what do you know about the working man? You need a job. You need to have worked a certain amount of time in your life. You spent 20 years in prison for murdering an unarmed and you, and I heard you recently change the story around on this, but the guy was unarmed. You yeah. shot him. You went to prison. So you didn't work all that time. And then you want you came out, you wanted to be a gangster. Yeah. You didn't work that time. I'm sure you may have had a job. Do you know what it's like to wash a dish or work behind a grill or to drive a truck? And you're representing the working man. What a joke. What do you yeah. think, James? Uh, is yeah, he I mean, I agree with of the you. working man. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, when I, you know, I look at that and what he's talking about, um, you know, Stevie Crea. And, and so, yeah, let, let's one thing we know, you know, not saying not putting Crea into this, but just anyone that is in that life, we know what, you know, they what they get involved with, the rackets they're involved with and, and so forth. But the the thing that you know, that bothered me about it was that Panisi is talking about how he, you know, basically stand up for the working man. And he was a loan shark. He was, he, you know, he had thousands of dollars on the street. He was collecting digs. You know, you get people that are desperate. They need money. So they come. So you mean he lent money to the working man? Working man. Yeah. Then and he went to get the money. If they didn't pay him back in time, he would terrorize them terrorize them and so you know the thing is it's not like a regular loan what you have to do you, you have to pay pay the vig every week or every month and and you never uh pay off the principal unless you give the full amount back and so yeah i mean that's he did that to you know working men and he also was given a position um you know based on um Patty Deloroso helped him to get this a legitimate job. And he, you know, he did. And we'll get, yeah. And we'll get yeah. into that one minute. I know where yeah. you're exactly where you're going on this. And I definitely yeah. want to go there. But um, first, let's, 
with Panisi. Uh, yeah. And uh, first of all, I thank you for finding a lot of this information out. A couple other people helped. And Justice yep. Tech Pro uh, was episode 88, I believe. Was that it? Mm-hmm. It was 88 that uh, it brought a gentleman in that he basically um, was trying to scam. He yep. worked for him for a few months. Yep. I guess that he calls that, considers that a job. Yeah. You know, going to work two days a week and uh, then trying to get money out of a company uh, when they don't owe you money. And then what do you do? You attack that man. Mm-hmm. So this is what this guy does. He attacks the people that were part of his life, people that were in his yep. life. This is what this is him. This, this is who Panisi is. He's no better than any of these other guys on here that do mm-hmm. the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, but but being that he talks so much and he does talk a lot, um, explain to us what this is. Yeah, so you know, this is what that is, is is basically there's a brief that's been sent to uh to the second uh circuit court of appeals, and what it is 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 a re- there's a request, uh, or it's evidence to support a request to have an appeals trial uh, uh, based on Stephen Stephen Crea and and those that were um, convicted. Who were the four in, main guys in that? Stephen Crea, Matthew Madonna. So they had more of the conspiracy, and then uh, you had what Christopher Londadio. And then a gentleman last name's Caldwell. Caldwell. And uh, two of them were supposedly were the shooters. And in the end, they basically got charged with conspiracy to murder. Right. And plus a other, bunch of other charges. The, yeah. The fact of the matter is that these guys are going to be in prison for the rest of their life if the appeals does not work. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Now, it's very difficult to get an appeal, especially for something like this. It, it, mm-hmm. Very, very rarely do you hear about it. But right. Thanks to John Panisi and guys like John Panisi and guys like uh, Frankie Pasqua, Mm -hmm. they make it possible. And let me show you why, then I'm going to explain to you why. Yeah. I want people to listen to this. I said, I know we're not supposed to ask for signs, but I beg you, tell me that going to the FBI is the right move for me to do. Give me some sign or I'm not going. I didn't want to go. I know people will never believe that, but I didn't want to go. I didn't live at it by a train station. You know, the train station was, we had to walk to it. There was no planes flying around. It wasn't an earthquake. Gary, I swear to you, I had wine glasses and different glasses and dishes in the house. Everything was shaking in the house. Like ding, 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 ding. And I even called my mother up. I says, I want you to listen to something. This went on for hours. She says, what is that? I says, it's the glasses. I prayed to grandma and grandpa. It's the glasses and the dishes in the house shaking. Gary, I can't even explain it. Yeah, you're on mute. Yeah, hey, um, Lee, you're on mute. Sorry. Okay. Explain to me why that is so important. What he did there. Yeah. So, so that's given him the that is he said the reason that he wanted that he went to the FBI. He, the reason that he ratted, you know, in the trial, he you know he was saying he had this story saying that you know he felt that um, they that everyone thought he was a rat. They were acting different around him. And then he was, uh, I guess there was an instance where Big John came in and said, hey, there's a couple of uh, people that are informants. And they happen to be uh, a couple of associates. They later find out who it is. But anyway, uh, I guess uh, what happened, Johnny Sideburns lifted up his shirt to show I'm not wired, I guess kind of as a joke. And then, uh, you know, John didn't do anything. Panisi didn't do anything. And so anyway, after that, he felt that that Big John and everyone else was avoiding him and that they thought he was a, a rat. And so he ended up, uh, you know, going down to uh, Georgia for a while. Uh, but And then finally he came back up and he just one day walked into the, uh, um, you know, walked into the FBI offices. He was claiming that 
you know, I guess that the, he thought the Lucchese family was uh, sending people from the Bloods, you know, the, you know, the Bloods and the Crips, yep. the Bloods, um, to um, try to kill him. And it was all in his mind is what it was, that part of it, you know. And I'm sure they, they had issues with, with Panisi, but, you know, it wasn't so much, oh, well, they thought he was a rat, but, you know, he acted weird, strange. He goes down, you know, avoids phone calls and, you know, starts being paranoid. Paranoia is saying that he was known for, you know, in that life with the Lacases. And so, you know, that it, it, they feel that that evidence should have been uh, presented in the trial. You know, it should to have attack, been. Why did, yeah. Attacked his character, basically, or well, his, yeah. uh, uh, how he was mentally. Well, yeah. I mean, if you have someone on, you know, that's on, you know, that's a witness, they need to be of sound mind, right? And if he's not, you know, that's that's uh, something the defense and the jury and everyone else needs to know. Was he an important witness? Would you say? I mean, yeah, yeah, he he was, and and the reason he was so important is that, you know, in the trial, especially it was. Stevie Cree. A lot of what he brought up was just basic stuff of, you know, the structure of, of the fam, you know, of the Lucas. He's one of the things he mentioned was, oh, he was friends with, with John Gotti Jr. You know, they always want to bring Gotti Jr. into it because that is a way, or Gotti, the Gotti name, because everyone knows who that is. And so, uh, you know, he was basically name dropping is what Panisi was doing. But anyway, the thing was, they had other witnesses or they had other people that were going to testify. But they but this John Panisi was the first made guy to actually um, testify in the trial. And so the feds felt, wow, yeah, we had all these associates. We had people affiliate or whatever. But we actually have an, an actual soldier or alleged soldier of the family that will testify. So that's why he was considered a, a big witness. And so now, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, the appeal, you know, it, it's been accepted. Well, basically, it's it's going to go to court now mm -hmm. and to find out whether they think it's legitimate. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hope it is, because yeah. if, if they do, if they use these characters that are out there to put people away and uh, they hit them with these conspiracy charges, put them all together. And next thing you know, you got four guys doing a, a long time the rest of their life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and then part of it, too, was that when in the 1990 trial, and I know that's a long time ago, but the one where where he got uh, convicted of, I guess it was uh, manslaughter, he had. Um, uh, now, when he gets, on, who are you talking about when you say he gets convicted? I'm sorry. Uh, when John Panisi uh, originally got convicted in 1990, I'm saying he what you know. The manslaughter conviction. He wasn't a Lucchese then, yes. but the reason I was bringing that up is that uh, this was a this was a case where he killed another man that was dating a girl that Panisi was going out with. And anyway, what the point of that is is that he lied during that testimony, and that false narrative was brought to light in another trial that Panisi uh, was testified in, and that was of the Lucchese soldier, Eugene Castelli. And so basically that's important because he had admitted to the government during his testimony in 1990 that he had lied. So that's just a concern that, again, based on his character, that was not brought up in that trial that uh, convicted Stephen, uh, Stevie Crea. So he's, he's already been proved to be a liar. That mm -hmm. stuff has not been... That stuff is, was not put out there. Not for that trial, no. Not for that <laughs> trial. And, and and so let me ask you. So there's another uh, guy that's involved in this that got bad mouth by um, by Panisi, and his name is uh, is a uh, Bill Fenton. Yeah. And, and on Justice Tech Pro's uh, cha channel, and it's uh, actually episode 88. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to play a little bit of it. I'm not going to yeah. go through the beginning. Let's explain what most of this uh, episode's about, because I'm not going to play the whole thing. Yeah. So, so anyway, John Panisi had put out a, a video where he was talking 
bad about this guy named this legitimate guy named Bill Fenton. Bill Fenton uh, was operations direct or operations VP of a company called Technology Solutions, and Technology Solutions through Bill Fenton um, actually gave John Panisi a job. You see, Bill Fenton was friends with Patty Della Russo, and so um, Bill needed a um, a safety officer, and so what it was, they gave him a job. And, and on top of that, he came for it. Uh, he charged half the price as a regular safety office officer. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he got. First of all, that should have made them nervous. That should have made them nervous right there. Yeah, I mean, but he only had to go to work two days a week too on site. No, wait a minute. I thought this was like a like a job that's on his social securities <laughs> and stuff. No, I mean, it was HR. They gave him a drug test and all that. So supposedly. So you mean nowadays job. when you get a drug test, it means it's a job. I guess. I don't you know, know about it, that. But. It just makes me laugh. You know, tell that to a guy that's uh, that, that's flipping burgers uh, 60 hours a week mm. to make uh, $500 to bring home to his wife, that that's a job. Mm. Yeah. You, know, you get to go stand and, and play safety, man. Yeah. And, and stand in the work area and uh, just make sure everybody's safe. It's wearing the hats and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what did he do? He, he, this guy, he had a bad experience with this guy, Bill Fenton. Yeah. And hey, then he, 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 you can finish it. I'm sorry. No, no, no. He had this bad experience with Bill Fenton and uh, because uh, of a couple of things. One, he was upset that uh, – so, you know, it's a long story, but uh, basically uh, when Panisi got hired on, they said if he had any um, certifications that he needed – that was related to this job. So technology solutions, they were laying fiber on telephone poles and underground. So it was, it was a fiber uh, company. And so this was going to be more of a commercial type work. And so that's the only reason he even could get the job because Panisi has a, a record, a prison record. And so he wasn't going to go around in houses or any of that stuff. So anyway, uh, technology solutions, uh, you know, gave him the job and they said, we'll give you 75,000 a year. You only have to come to work um, two days a week. And then we will let you hire two people as assistants. And then uh, finally, what they said was, if you have any safety certifications that need to get, um, you know, basically recertified, then we will pay it, but it has to be. That, yeah, and that's the only the thing job. that the, this is. That's the only thing that this bill uh, Fenton agreed to pay. Nothing else. Exactly, and okay. and this is all over one hundred and twenty-five dollars that Panisi's upset about. Okay, but then Panisi started billing him for other stuff. Yeah, so so that was that was one of the things that ended up happening was so. Oh, we got to tell you about this on with Panisi. Here's how bad it was on the on the just on the certification, you know, expense. So Panisi puts it on an expense report. Uh, he he wants to get paid the hundred and twenty five dollars. So uh, Bill had talked to there was another guy that actually John reported to that was over safety and. Bill and this guy said, no, we're not doing it. And then Bill said, well, I'll talk to Patty about it. So he went to Patty Della Russo and Patty said, hell no, you don't pay that. Don't pay John for that, reimburse him for that. And so Panisi was upset with both Bill Fenton and his boss, Patty Della Russo. And so that's where a lot of the, the problem was. On and then that. there were two more, then there were two more guys that were hired to work different sites. And yep. then they were handing in, uh, they wanted money, uh, thousands of dollars back for tolls. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what happened there, supposedly what happened was John was supposedly involved with it. And so the, they were going to submit these, uh, fake, uh, tolls that saying, Hey, we, you know, legitimate, tolls if they were traveling for the job would get paid those two guys did travel one of them had to go to jersey the other was in long island and so they would pay them the tolls which you know tolls are expensive it might be 20 bucks 
30 bucks a day in some cases, but not thousands of dollars a week. And so John was supposedly involved in it. They thought they could have this racket where the three of them would collect uh, the, the money. John wouldn't obviously send an expense report, but the two guys that work for John would, and then they would split the take. And um, but John actually was confronted about it. And he said, OK, we yeah, don't pay them. Don't pay it. And, so, and then this guy, Bill Fenton, he wasn't going to even come on and do this. No. But he almost uh, basically he said he did lose a contract because yeah. of what Panisi was doing online. Yeah. I mean, Panisi was was went on his show on in Panisi's uh, podcast. He was calling Fenton a drunk uh, that he is basically drunk from um, sun up to sundown. Um, he's. You know, I guess the guy didn't drink at night, but um, he, you know, it's not true about right. him being a drunk. You know, he ran a company, you know, a 1200 person company. And so the other thing was that he had contracts. And so people were hearing what Panisi was saying and and they come to Bill and say, why were you doing stuff with John Panisi, you know, listen to what John's saying about you. you know, and then John uh, made up a story that that he threatened to, you know, kick Bill's ass and that there was another guy, the project manager, that he was going to take him behind a car and and whip up on him. And and that never happened. You know, in was fact, that in, what, was that in between meeting John Gotti Jr. at the gym and beating him up? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, okay. it probably because this is, guy's so. beating everybody up. I mean, yeah, yeah, these guys, yeah. you know, and listen, I'm not saying the guy's not a tough guy, but a quarter of yeah. them, they, they're just beating everybody up. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, what happened uh, in that case, Patty Delaroso, uh, Delo Russo told, um, Panisi, you have to go in and apologize. To Bill and and he did and, you know he ended up apologizing and actually after that it, it worked out a little better John you know John for the first month or so wouldn't even show up they would call and and they call him and he would uh, say oh I can't come in or whatever and so you know John was given a you know seventy five thousand dollars just come in couple of times a week. Two days a week. Who wouldn't yeah. want a job like that? Now, let me, uh, I, I'm going to play a little part of this to give you an idea. Yeah. Uh, I like this part of this episode. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play it and uh, uh, not too much, maybe about two to three minutes, and then we'll go mm -hmm. from there. Sure. Here we go. Uh, closing down that company because that comp we didn't get paid from the customer. Gotcha. So gotcha. I had to close that company down and I let everybody go, including John. And uh, I think that's the last time I saw John. I think that was, I think September of 2017. It might have been a few months after that. I, I'm not not quite sure. It's Understood. been a few years ago, but yep. but yeah. He, it, 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 um, so basically, his episode was uh, about 90% inaccurate based on mm -hmm. what really took place. That's really the bottom line here. And and he's putting your name on there. He's using your image. Mm -hmm. And is now unfortunately impacting certain deals that you have based on his lies, if I understand correctly. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. You know, and and I'll I'll tell you one other story just to put some context around uh, around who John is. Sure. So I we were having a uh, barbecue on a Sunday. A friend had a place out in Oakdale, and I happened to be in New York, you know. And we were going to have a barbecue out there, go on the boat. Uh, go on a jet ski, just hang out for the day. Gotcha. And uh, John was invited there. Uh, I don't recall who invited him, but somebody did, because it was going to be a, quite a group of people on this, you know, and the wives and girlfriends or whatever. Gotcha. And John shows up with his, I think she was six years old at the time, his daughter. Okay. We, he had with her, with him often. Well, we didn't, there was no life jacket for the, for the uh, daughter. Right. So, um, I had had a few drinks, but the friend that was with with me hadn't. And I said, uh, Rick, can you take uh, John up to this boat, to this marine store, and so he can get uh, his, his daughter a, a life vest? Right. So they get in the car, and I get a call about, I don't know, 20 minutes later from Rick saying, 
a bill John doesn't have any money to get this life vest. Gotcha. It's 60 bucks. I said, okay, well, there's money on the console, buy it for him. Right. So, because my friend had left his wallet, he was wearing swimming trunks, you know. Right. But, you know, he, I, 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 I've seen these videos and he's, and he's, and he's, he's, he's trashed a few friends of mine and, uh, all over the, all over the internet. And I just, it, well, that's like, that, that's their theme. You know, they'll trash everybody else and they make themselves always look like the most powerful, the richest, yeah, you know, everything. Yeah, and, exactly. and everybody else is beneath them. You know, that, that seems to be uh, their playbook for the lying informant. You know, that's what it right, seems to be. Yeah. Right. And it, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, just say who you are and say, say what, <laughs> if you're going to go down that road, just be honest. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, well, that's, unfortunately, uh, that's, that's a, a problem that they all tend to share. You know, uh, they all tend to share the problem of telling the truth. And at every angle, they don't realize when you're a liar, there's going to be people who pick up on those lies. There's going to be people such as yourself who are directly involved and know it's a lie. And there's going right. to be another side to the story. And that's why I feel giving this platform and making people have the ability to, to say, no, that's not true, is so important because all the public is hearing of these one-sided stories that paint these guys in the best of light. It's, it's comical. It's absolutely comical. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I just, I, I, I know I appreciate what you and the, 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 we push back community. I appreciate what you guys are doing. You know, it, it's, thank you. You know, it, 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 somebody has to get facts out, you know, um, and, and honestly, that's mouth. what it's about. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I let people know my opinion, but the truth is I always say, don't go by my opinion. Just listen to the facts, listen to the different sides, right. listen to who has receipts, who has backup, and then you decide who's lying. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to play that because I'm going to be honest with you. When I first got into this and, and I would hear uh, Dominic speak about, uh, these lying informants. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a few lying informants. Mm -hmm. It's not a few, dude. It's like yeah. 99%. I think all of them. I haven't found one that hasn't been BSing yet. Yeah. Yeah. That purple gang stuff. I, I was, I saw stuff where even that guy, Frankie Pas Pasca or whatever was Pasqua. saying that. Pasqua. What Pasqua. Pasqua. Yeah. yeah. He was saying, oh, yeah, they, uh, the Casey's had him, warned him to, and gave him the contract to kill Michael Meldish. It's just, yeah, just yeah. crazy, these people. And he's in, back in prison for choking out his son. So, oh yeah, so that's why he's back in prison. I think he got sentenced to five years or something. Oh uh, yes, it, well, he got violated, and he's back doing like five years. But these are the people that they put out here to testify. And yep. John Benisi is up there and it's like, okay, John Panisi, you want a successful show? You got a successful show, but I got an idea. How about if you just talk about you, the things you did, cut to exaggerating, even Sammy Gravano exaggerates, but Sammy, but let's put, let's, the reality is this. Mm -hmm. He's no Sammy Gravano. He's no, yeah. uh, he's no Mikey Scars. I mean, these guys are rats, but we don't even, this guy, we don't even know for, we, there's no, evidence that he's actually made he says he's made yeah no yeah. i mean yeah i mean he says he is but uh yeah i mean that's uh, he was in the life uh, i guess four years maybe well, he had then, a cup of tea basically yeah yeah you know, exactly. He, exactly you know and there was and, a couple of, and dominic chicali same way but i'm not going to even compare him with dominic chicali because dominic dominic chicali was actually known out on the street as a tough guy yeah yeah, he actually he did, you know, uh, you got to remember, this guy went to prison for shooting an unarmed kid or an, another man that was unarmed mm -hmm. because he was, uh, because his girlfriend chose that guy over him. So he decided he sent this guy out to get the gun, bring the gun back, and they shot and murdered. They waited for this guy mm -hmm. and they killed this guy. Yeah. I mean, he's just, I mean, the problem with Panisi, I, I think he's fairly smart. He, he comes across fairly intelligent but the problem is he has he's got paranoia he's got jealousy issues he he really uh, m the thing is he's got a, a dark side to him that's you know he tries to come across as as just this guy that had gotten screwed over by everyone in the family and then he uh 
um, you know, wants to make himself uh, appear to be the one that was uh, a wise, wise man. Not only a wise man, he's taken up for the working man, James. Yeah. I mean, yeah, James, unbelievable. Uh, James, would you compare your uh, Social Security uh, job, your, your report to his? I mean, what do you have, like probably 30 years of work experience? Oh, yeah, yeah. At least there. I started wearing at 15 years old. I'm 52, so... Yeah, shit, almost 40 years. So I just found it comical when he went out to steer. Well, first of all, you're gangsters, guys. You know, it's yeah. like Stephen Crea. He was what he was, but that doesn't mean yeah. he deserves to be in prison on something that he did not do. Yeah, and I don't know why he would bring this up. Why would he put a meme up like that on his community page? Number one, they just, the government's just saying now that, you know, um, March 6th, you know, yeah, they're going to look at this new evidence. or And now he... No, March 6th. It's past March 6th. You know, yeah, March 6th is when the paperwork okay. was there. So we, we'll know something soon. You know, it can take a while. We may not... There may not be... I guess the court for, just looks at it and makes this decision. And yep. and hopefully he'll get a I new heard. trial. You know, yep, that, exactly. that hopefully that's what, they'll look at the case again. Yeah, and, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I don't know why he would put something up there like that especially with what he's done with you know th this example here of how he was when he's working with uh, a, a legitimate guy and then second is you know him being a loan shark and putting thousands on the street i mean i just don't understand him you know he was in that life he knows what these people do and and then he's going to uh point out and because he, because he works on yeah. YouTube. Because he works on YouTube now. Yeah. It's his first legitimate job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, he's on YouTube, and uh, I guess he's using that for himself. So God yeah. bless him. Yeah. Uh, but but it, it's just comical because these men, Stephen Crea, Maddie Madonna, they're they're older men. One's pushing eighty, the other one's oh, pushing ninety. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna sit there and insult them, guys. It's like, dude, have a fucking heart. Just. Just keep your mouth shut and, and do your thing. Yeah, exactly. None of, the, none of these, none of these guys can. They're not capable of not getting mad. They got thin skin. Yeah. Uh, and when they're out in the street, they're tough guys and stuff. But they would kill you if you said something wrong because they have thin skin. Yeah. And uh, then they come onto YouTube and someone questions them, mm -hmm. and they're ready to beat somebody up or put something up about that person. Yeah, and you know what's funny about him and you know, John Panisi in particular, if he hadn't went into the FBI office, they wouldn't. He wasn't on their radar. They didn't know anything about him. They weren't even sure when he first came in was he even telling was he even knew anyone because they were thinking he's just a crazy guy coming in. They were going, "Hey, Bob, story. you know this guy? Do you have you seen this guy anywhere?" <laughs> no, I, I don't even know who he is. Yeah. Once he said, "Oh, I can give you Stephen Korea," they jumped all over. I can give you Maddie Madonna. Oh my God! Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's what it. That's why it's what it's all about with the with the government. And yeah, he wasn't even on their radar. He, but that just, but that shows you that there's some things off with this guy. And yeah, that's who you know he is. What it is with these with these guys out in the street. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they would rather go down being shot. Are going to prison for something they actually did right exactly you know uh instead of having some weasel come along and bury you in a hole mm -hmm. on some stuff that's probably not even true right you know because you know we we have, have an idea people coming forward saying oh i was the killer i killed uh a meldish and then someone else says yeah it. yeah exactly that's why i bring up what frankie pasquas and you know i don't believe him but you know it's just that's what you you see out there multiple people have talked about oh that you know they were a part of it or behind it and and so yeah there's and questions know, and the there's funny thing questions. with frankie pasqua Mm -hmm. You know, you could see a, a tape where he's being pulled over by. Please hit uh, hit the like button, subscribe button. I really appreciate it. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Um, if you like this, please hit like. If you yeah. want to donate to the show, there's a little heart down here or underneath here to be information. And also, I'm going to put some information down on which push back underneath here. 
And uh, that was episode 88 that we played. And there's many episodes that deal with these uh, lying informants. Yep. Uh, okay. I'm sorry to cut, say I just had to get that uh, advertising. In no, there. no, of course, of course. But no, no, we were just saying about, you know, uh, Frankie Pasqua and, you know, these people that, you know, lying informants and it's, it's just, uh, you know, the, the good news is, is that at least uh, these guys are going to get a, at least a possible appeal. You know, the government is at least opened up the door to look at this evidence. And so it'll be interesting what happens because, you know, at the very least, they're going to go back and look at everything that John Panisi's done on his podcast and start you know, possibly raising questions and raising questions with Frankie Pasqua, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and at least I don't have to look for him. He's right there. Yeah. They can go grab him anytime. Yeah. Uh, but this is what we got people. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I didn't feel like doing another Panisi thing today, but when I seen he put up that thing about, uh, about Stephen Korea and he's talking about yeah. working man and stuff, it's like, dude, don't pretend you're for the working man. You don't know shit about the working man. Right. Nothing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it, it, it bothered me too. I mean, I usually don't get bothered by those memes, but that one was a little over the top, in my opinion. Hypocritical. Imagine, imagine that, though. Gangsters uh, uh, trying to make money on uh, unions and stuff, and all. Imagine that. That's part of the game. That's that's a lot. A lot of these guys do prison time for it. Mm -hmm. And you know, exactly. It, it's not like it used to be where people were. Now we have the, the, the government doing it to us. We don't need uh, gangsters yeah. doing it nope. anymore. You're right. Yeah. The biggest gang yep. going. Yep. But anyway, anything you'd like to say, James, before we leave? No, no. no. I, I thought this was an interesting uh, conversation. I mean, I, you know, I was surprised we would do two shows about where we mentioned Panisi, but, you know, this we haven't mentioned kind of in months. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, he's out there. He's out there. It's like, dude, you know, you got a show. People watch it. Just do your show. Don't knock the people that you put away. Shame yeah. on you. Yeah, exactly. Shame on all you guys that are doing it. All you guys that are going after the people you put away. Mm -hmm. I mean, what the hell? They're the ones sitting in jail. They're the ones sitting in a cell. Some of them are locked up 23 hours a day. And yeah. you're out here because of the fact that you couldn't do what they're doing. Right. And if they don't think that Stephen Korea or Maddie Madonna could have came out and said and gave people up, they easily could have. Sure, sure. You know, could. if Joe Messino can take it, it could give up people and they'll, they'll listen to him. You don't think they would listen to them? Oh, of course. But they did their time. And uh, yep. thank you so much, James. I appreciate yep. it. Thank and you. Hit the like button, people. I appreciate that also. And thank you so much. Bye. Bye.